listening normally to me to Extinction Rebellion is a woman called Zoe. This week, Zoe, with six other women from XR, went down to London to Canary Wharf to the headquarters of Barclays Bank and they smashed the windows. It's not that they like smashing glass. The truth of the matter is that the cornerstone of our system is the private banks. The private banks are fueling climate change. They're the ones financing all the projects that are taking the fossil fuels out of the ground. And the worst one in Europe is Barclays. But it's not just climate change. Private banks are the reason why most of us are in debt. 97% of all money is issued by private banks. And every time they issue it, the issue it is debt. We do not control money. We need to regain control of money. And that's why XR has been targeting private banks. I'll come back to this bill now. Some of us in XR see it as a victory. XR and Black Lives Matter have brought the government and the police to breaking point. The only way that they can control the people now is to go super anti-democratic. To protest is a human right. And because they can't handle our non-violent protests, what do they do? They bring this bill in and they also investigate Extinction Rebellion and Black Lives Matter as extremist terrorist organisations. Lord Walney, otherwise known as ex-Labour MP John Woodcock, who was accused of sexual misadventure, let's put it like that, is going to lead the investigation. He was rewarded by the Tories for telling everyone to vote Tory at the last election. Ex-Labour MP, so now he's Lord Walney. His partner, of course, has led debates at Policy Exchange. That's where the dark money lies, down in London, on Tufton Street, where you can never find out where these organisations get their money, and a lot of it's off billionaires. And Policy Exchange have already said that Black Lives Matter and Extinction Rebellion are terrorist organisations. It's great, isn't it? Non-violence. It says it on the tin. Extinction Rebellion are a non-violent organisation, so their response is to call us terrorists. And for me, that is the main reason why we need to kill this bill. <laughs> Extinction! <laughs> Extinction! of the library for our demonstrators, so I've been told that we can't do that because they have a period of national vote of mourning for the loss of the of Can I just ask, where is the moment of mourning for the thousands of people that lost their lives because of COVID? COVID. The thousands of health workers. Because that's their lives and that is no longer needed by this country. What about their moment of mourning? I just want to talk about how beautifully diverse the crowd is and how we're all coming together week in, week out to fight against all forms of oppression. We've had animal rights activists and the amazing Extinction Rebellion amongst us. We've had proud anti-racists and people from Black Lives Matter and stand up to racism. We've had sisters on courts and hundreds of brave, resilient women and warriors, many of whom I've seen over the past few weeks, come up here and speak and share their own experiences of sexual assault and violence against women. We have people from the LGBTQ plus community. We have unions. We have the SWP, the Socialist Workers' Party. The unity out here is amazing to see, and I feel like we're all part of something very special. So the people and the systems that oppress us want us to be divided and fight amongst ourselves. That's the only way they can remain in power. So I really want us to just keep up the unity, 
continue to support each other and fight from all angles. Let's continue to take to the streets as regularly as possible. Let's continue to make noise and be destructive. Let's continue to be organised and call out this government. And as I said last week, we are the opposition. Power to the people, no justice, no peace. Let's keep fighting. which is a joke, um, I had to fight unbelievably hard uh, to access medication which uh, is, is apparently um, saving my life uh, and continues to save my life every single day. So um, I'm sure 
everyone is aware that hate crime uh, across all minorities are on the rise at the moment. Uh, no thanks to our uh, right-wing government. But we're specifically seeing um, an increase in hate crime against LGBT plus people, especially trans people. Uh, we're seeing this because of a rise in the far right. We're seeing fascist neo-Nazis and the far right on our street. I I'm not sure if people are aware, but um, that was a threat against all people out today uh, spreading around social media. It turns out to be bullshit um, just as a tactic to, to make a shot off us a little bit. Uh, but I don't know about you, but um, I, I feel safe in this crowd. I know that no matter what they say, I will always be safe around my brothers, sisters, and those in between or around on the streets today. This bill is uh, targeting directly left-wing groups who oppose fascism and oppose the far right. And this bill is not only attacking our rights, but is, is an involvement of fascism uh, and of the far right uh, as a means to sort of suppress us uh, as, as individuals. Trans people are dying uh, on the streets right now. Uh, there's a massive homelessness epidemic within trans uh, and LGBT groups. And um, we're also seeing LGBT plus people and explicitly trans people being murdered uh, by the far right. Um, last year, there were 350 recorded murders across the world of trans people, uh, but I, I guarantee you that number will, will be thousands and thousands. It is only those which are reported on uh, and in uh, a government like our own that isn't, isn't happening, unfortunately. Uh, and we also see this in Brazil. Brazil is one of the worst and they don't recognize trans people. So of course they're not going to report on the massive deaths of people over there. As alluded to earlier, the 40% of, of trans people who receive care uh, attempt suicide. Uh, this is a tragedy. Uh, and like I said earlier, I, I would be dead right now if it was not for the fact that I received care and I received uh, compassion from those around me. And I think it's a scary fact that I am alive right now because of luck and because I have um, a relatively a privileged position in society. Uh, working class trans people are, are dying at a disproportionate rate to other people and it is a tragedy that the, the news media on the left and the right don't talk about this. So I'm going to be a bit tangent now and I want to talk about kind of why transphobia and homophobia exist in our society today. Because if you look back 200, 300, 400 years ago, LGBT people did face oppression, and um, which is a very modern phenomenon that we're seeing. If we look at communities in other parts of the world, like Native Americans, like in India, there are trans people and they've never faced oppression, and they exist in, in a perfect state of harmony with their brothers, sisters, and those in between. And it, it is a tragedy that we see this today. We see oppression of LGBT people. So, so why do we see this? And it is a, it's a formation of class society. It is capitalism which is causing this uh, an intense transphobia and homophobia against us. Uh, we're seeing this because of the involvement of the, the modern family units we see it today, the attempt to sort of force people to, to reproduce to create a new line of workers. Frederick Engels talks about this in his um, book, The Origin of the Family, and, and we know for a fact but seeing in, in other societies LGBT phobia doesn't exist today. The question is asked, why am I forced to uh, face oppression today? It is bullshit, I shouldn't be. It is purely constructed by the state. And that's a joke, I don't know why you thought it was a joke. So we see the state completely support this with the murder of a man Keenan known as, as Alan Turing, which everyone's aware of him. Uh, he was a genius, uh, he saved uh, countless lives uh, with his creation of the computer and the cracking of the Enigma code. Yet the state decided, you know what, because this guy is gay, we're going to ship him off, chemically castrate him, and then eventually to his, his, his suicide. I don't care what people say, this is state-sponsored murder. The man did not have any need to be killed, and yet he was by, by the system to oppress us. Um, and the fact that we see this continuing today with, with trans people across the world being forced to, to block their fertility. Uh, I myself, I'm infertile, I don't care, I don't want kids, kids are kind of gross, no shade for anyone in the group. But like, uh, I was never offered any care for my reproductive health. Um, the care that I would have been given, I would have waited three years for, and I'm not waiting three years to, to live in the body which I want to live in. Um, that's a joke. Uh, another part of why we experience transphobia and homophobia is to divide and rule, as we've said many times by some of the amazing speakers we've had to do today. So that they know that the people united will never be defeated. So they completely uh, separate us on grounds of race, class, gender, sexuality. Uh, general identity. Yeah, because they know that as we see about in the groups today of people from different backgrounds, we're all so united and we're all so strong together. The police have no chance against us in the form we, we stand together today. I think it's beautiful that we're all here today. Um, so, so Vladimir Lenin said in 1905 that revolutions are the festivals of the oppressed. This isn't a revolution, but this is a festival of the oppressed. 
I see everybody here from different backgrounds of different race, class, gender, sexuality, people who are disabled. I think it's beautiful and it is a festival of our oppression that we stand here today. In I don't know about you. So like, it's, it's, this is what capitalism is oppressing us. And we know that I'm never gonna not be oppressed under this system. You can't reform away capitalism in order for you need a revolution to end capitalism and to bring in a society which I think is socialism, which will uh, end our oppression and, and, and make us all live in harmony as we were always meant to be. In the, in the 1970s, gay activists uh, had a slogan of like, um, to come out is the best way to support gay people. If you're gay, come out and stand alongside us. And I think that's completely true. However, it doesn't go far enough. We know today that capitalism is the reason we face oppression. So you need to come out, join a socialist party, join the Socialist Workers Party, fight for socialism, and fight for a better future. Thank you so much. I'm blown away by, by the young people that have spoken today. I feel like some old codger getting up to speak to you lot now. And I probably can't be half as articulate as some of the people that have spoken today. It's been really impressive. But I just want to say a few things. Firstly, uh, about the Roma. Uh, I think it's important, a little bit what Sky talked about before, about we live in a more divided world than ever. Uh, we live in a world where people like Donald Trump, although we managed to defeat him in America, still got 70 million votes of people voting for him. Bolsonaro in Brazil, Le Pen in France, uh, Orban in Hungary, a growth of far-right fascists and racists that are running the world for the interests of the rich and profitable, and using divide and rule to maintain their rule. You know, they aren't just uh, bigots when it comes to racism, they're also homophobes, they're also people that hate working class people, they're the ones that want, don't care how many we die due to COVID. These are the same people, and these are the same rulers that we have to fight and organise against. Our next challenge is defeating the bill, that's why we're here today. And one of the big groups they are constantly targeted uh, by their sort of politics is that divide rule is the Roma. So that's why the, the, that bit, bit of the bill that relates to Roma is so important to their side because it means that it's all about the othering of a group of people, denying their right to live how they want to live, denying that, their, that they have equal stake in society. Uh, in Hungary they are treated like black people are treated in this country. That's how the Roma treated, and they were ones that are round up and gassed by the fascists in Hitler's Germany. So these are the same struggle we have to fight, and we know that the reason why that's included in the bill is to increase that division and divide and rule, and to increase the rubble of racism, and give legitimacy to the growth of the far right in this country that we forced back so far. So if that's what they're about, I think that they've overstepped the mark this time with this bill, haven't they? Because if we wanted them to introduce a bill that brought everyone together, They've definitely managed to achieve that so far, haven't they? We have to make sure, though, that we reach out to every community, to every organisation, to every individual that stands for human rights, that watch people fight for their civil rights in America, or women fight for the right to vote in this country, or applaud what's going on in terms of fighting for democracy and rights. All of them are on our side. All of them need to be mobilised. All of them have to realise that the only way they're going to get our rights is if we're willing to organise and fight for them. And that means we need to make sure that we come back here. I know nationally they call two days of action, one for next Saturday and one for May the 1st. And we need to make sure that we reach out to every group, every organisation, every trade union, every NGO, every person that has got a stake in this bill uh, that wants to fight it. We have to reach out to all those people to make sure that there are thousands on the streets and that we force this government back. Because they've got um, this Queen's speech on the 11th of May, which is still up to making it of the dear departed racist uh, that's left us, parasite that's left us now. Um, if she's still up to making the speech on the 11th of May, then we want to make sure that the movement is so big by May the 1st, she's frightened, or the government are frightened about putting that on the bill. We want to make sure that we can try and get rid of that bill before then. So we want the biggest demonstration of thousands by out by the May. We want to create as much noise as possible. So you need to bring as much noise as possible to the demonstrations. That will make Lamin happy, that will make all of us happy to make sure that we're doing what we can to mobilise the biggest possible demonstration. And when we defeat this bill, we must not stop there. We must continue to organise for our planet, for our humanity, to bring races together, to bring a planet together that's not based on profit, that we do really fight for system change that we need to see in this country and across the world. Because people need to put for profit, we need to fight for that world now. So thank you for your time.
Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who has decided today to be the presence of a true democracy. To those who believe we are unlawful, I have one thing to say to you. The law does not equate morality. There was a time when owning a slave, maritally raping your wife, and having child laborers was legal in this country. The law is not absolute and should be criticized and adjusted in order to serve the people. These are the symptoms of a healthy democracy. The police's authority does not equate to justice. They have shown us time and time again that they do not serve and protect the people, but serve and protect the state. A state that sees you, the police, and the bodies that they brutalize as disposable. A state that is devoted to order over justice. A state whose foundations lie in white supremacy, colonization, slavery, imperialism, war, genocide, and oppression. How many more must die at the hands of state violence, structural racism, engendered violence, and state-sanctioned sa bigotry? We do not recognize the police's authority, for they have exploited it decade after day and decade. Who do we call when the police are the ones killing? Who serves and protects us when the police are the cause of abuse? I ask you, Manchester, who polices the police? I believe there may be good people who become cops, but I do not believe there are good cops. For the system's officers stand in solidarity with has been corrupt for over a century. It has blood on its hands. We stand here today for the black community, for all people of colour, for women of all backgrounds, for the traveller community, for the Muslim community, for the Jewish community, for the LGBTQ plus community, for the disabled community, for all those who have unjustly been persecuted and murdered at the hands of state-sanctioned violence. Thank you. We're all here to protest the bill, and um, I just want to bring some attention to the fact that this rock goes way deeper than just the Tory. Uh, we live in a very red part of the country. We live in a very Labour council with a Labour mayor. But just this week, whilst in this current climate where we're talking all the time about justice and the police, the Labour council decided to announce the hiring of over 300 police officers to go directly inside schools throughout Greater Manchester. That money could fund nearly 500 youth workers to actually work on things that actually affect students, like mental health, like exclusions, which lead people directly into a prison pipeline. And I think we just need to be very aware that this is not just the Tories, this is something that's so deep and systemic in our society and we have to crowd it out. It's not okay when it's the Labour Party. We need to move beyond that factionalism and we have to recognise that as much as we have to fight this bill in every way that we can, we're probably going to lose. We need to think, what do we do then? And we need to build mutual aid, we need to work together to build communities that have been so wrecked by neoliberal politics. That's how we come forward and build a better society for each and every one here.